Hello YouTube, and welcome back to Pokemon Puzzle Week. So as you can see, I've just acquired this water lump that I'm going to mash together with my rock to make mud. And mud turns out to be the perfect combo to deal with Wu-Ten in Surge, who has about as many spikes in his hair as Brock had. But seeing as how I was able to make quick work of Brock in under a minute using my two side spikes of hair, I doubt Lieutenant Surge will truly be any competition at all. So, now that he's done talking about me being a baby, it's time to pick our Pokemon. He's got all electric types, which means I'm obviously going to pick Bulbasaur, so that his types are not effective against mine. Or maybe I'll pick Pikachu because it's funny. I picked Pikachu because it's funny. Now, in actual Pokemon, I would have no chance at all. That said, I've got a very good chance here because Pikachu is the strongest Pokemon puzzle leaguer. It turns out that uh, mice actually have the highest puzzling mental capacity of any Pokemon in the world. It's kind of like how birds can talk in our world. In Pokemon, mice can solve puzzles. As you can see, things are getting pretty spicy up in here. Uh, you might even call them extra spicy. Uh, that's how Lieutenant Surge likes his wings, so he's going to become a little bit weary of me when he realizes that I'm using the patented spicy wing strategy. He'll uh, get a little bit hungry, and that might catch him off guard. Now, Jolteon is a weird Pokemon because it knows Pin Missile, which is a bug-type move, and in the first generation, it was like the only bug-type move other than Leech Life. Um, and if you don't know anything about Pokemon, this will be completely irrelevant to you, so I urge you to just get a jar of mayonnaise and stick your ears in that instead of listening to my commentary. It'll be roughly as entertaining for you. Um, now... I'd like to talk a little bit about our Lord and Savior, the Spaghetti Monster. Not actually mine. I don't believe in any god because I'm an atheist, which makes me better than everyone, obviously. But uh, the Flying Spaghetti Monster is the one religion that I might believe temporarily because it believes that there's a Flying Spaghetti Monster that they hail to. And I personally believe that Spaghetti is kind of like a monster and also like a holy figure sometimes, even though I don't really like Spaghetti that much. And I know I'm probably going to get a lot of hate for that, about being a filthy heretic, but I, I just don't like spaghetti. Alright, so I'm getting a little close to the top, but Lieutenant Surge doesn't realize what I'm doing is just making it so that I have more than four moves available to me, which would be an illegal move in base Pokemon. But in this game, it's completely legal. It requires a little bit of advanced tactics. So, I'm not exactly sure what I was trying to do here. I kind of got confused, and then just, I got pooped on by some blocks. Um... But it's okay, I realize now Lieutenant Surge isn't wearing a shirt under that vest of his, which means he will be prime for tickle, bite, tickle fights. I accidentally said tickle bites, which yeah, I don't think that's a thing. Maybe there's like a snack called tickle bites. You'll have to Google that one for me. I obviously have a great combo I could have done there, but instead I did an okay combo. It was purposeful though, because I wanted to save some blocks, so I didn't run out of blocks. And if you remember from the last video, I never do anything on accident. Uh, as you can see, I got the perfect 7 combo there, and now it's time to chain those into a times 2 into a times 3 and so on. Uh, I could chain that. I didn't chain that. It's okay. Alright, so these yellow and blue are going to line up, and Lieutenant Surge is going to get wrecked. You might even say that I no-scoped him. I'm not sure why you would say that, but you might. Um, now, I wonder if Lieutenant Surge has an opinion on Mountain Dew and Doritos, because those are some very controversial topics. Uh, amongst the no-scoping community. A lot of people legitimately like them, and other people find them to be just a hilarious meme, may, may whatever you want to call it. Um, I wonder what Lieutenant Surge's take on that would be, since he's obviously a top member. Uh, out of all the Pokemon trainers, who do you think would be on Reddit the most? I think it would be Gary, since he always talks about smelling people. I think Reddit is a place for uh, the sense of smell to kick in. Now my talk about Reddit obviously intimidated Lieutenant Surge so much he realized I was too powerful with the strength of the entire internet on my side and he just sacrificed himself to me and maybe the Spaghetti Monster since I mentioned it. I don't know, maybe he's a believer of the Spaghetti Monster orthodoxy or whatever. So this badge is a flower. Now I've got some mud and a flower which is fitting since I'm now battling Erica. So I can plant a little flower, and maybe it'll grow, and then I can fight her plants with my crappy plastic plant that I just put in some mud. Um, now, I'm gonna be straight up here. I, uh, I lost to Erica like 500 times the first time I played this game as a child. 
so I'm not sure how this is going to go here. I honestly don't remember. But uh, let's let's see how I do. Um, so she's doing some pretty intense combos over there. If you watch her screen for a moment. Oh, never mind. Her screen just got boring. Time to watch my screen again. Um, as you can see, I used a grass block to destroy that grass block. Uh, you know, it's kind of like magnets. The same kind of magnets repel each other. Opposites attract, so I don't want to use the opposite super effective block because that would just make that block grow twice its size. That's complete BS, but uh, let's pretend that it's true. So I'm uh, a little bit confused here because the way the blocks are arranged is kind of hurting my skull and my brain, which are two separate things. Um, I'm going to line up some blocks in the best way possible. I could have not done that and just had a better setup, but it's okay. It was obviously on purpose. So there's a lot of blocks happening here and there was a lot of blocking to the left and to the right and I tried to block harder than Erica blocked but she blocked pretty darn hard uh, you might even say that there were too many men on the ice at some point but no coach called me on it so I'm gonna go ahead and assume that it didn't actually happen um, once in a while I like to pretend that uh, whoa okay sorry I got a little bit confused by what was going on there I'm guessing I die I died okay well Erica destroyed me this time, but she has no idea what unholy reckoning she has unleashed upon herself, as I've got the entire arsenal of United States monologues on my side. Um, for the record, if you don't know what I'm referencing at any point, you're going to have to deal with it, because I've referenced a lot of things in these videos, apparently, um, the kind of thing that's started to happen. Uh, now, I think it'd be interesting to see if, like, a Deku Nut was put into this game. If you could, like, stun your opponent with it and maybe make them unable to move for a certain amount of time. Of course, it would be highly overpowered and unlikely to work in the game's balance, but I would like it so that I could throw a Deku Nut at Erica. Uh, and I just got destroyed there. I uh, realized afterwards I could have saved myself, but I was trying out that advanced tactic of losing the game so that my opponent can't do anything again. It didn't really work out that well for me, but now I'm gonna have to try again so on the bright side you know whatever as you can see I accelerated my blocks way up now most people wouldn't be comfortable doing this but I'm a professional so I took the best advantage of it and made some sick combos uh, if you're truly the skillist at the game and by that I mean like pretty good or at least better than I am you should probably be accelerating the blocks often so you always have stuff to work with but I'm not a clever man, nor a clever horse, so instead I just made some combos. Um, I've been really wanting to go to Steak and Shake for a while now. That's a place that sells milkshakes and steak burgers, but I'm mostly interested in the milkshakes and french fries. Um, I've been craving that quite a bit lately. Not sure when uh, I'll next get the opportunity to go, but <clears throat> I could really go for some of that. This video is sponsored by Plinko, the TV show where you watch people put things in a machine and it tumbles down haphazardly, and if they catch the ball, they win. I think that's what Plinko is anyway. It might be a uh, TV show. Um, I uh, haven't seen the videos yet, but apparently there have been some sequels to the Llamas and Hats videos released. And I find that a little bit weird, since Llamas with Hats is something that I thought was over years ago. Uh, I'm gonna have I'm gonna have to check out the videos, or maybe I'll just ignore them, hoping that they aren't actually real. But I haven't heard anything about them, so I can only assume they're terrible. That said, those videos are quite well animated and voice acted. The uh, scene where. Lopez turns off his robotics and speaks only Spanish was truly moving to me. Now, as you can see, my Bulbasaur is having some serious problems combating this Weepin' Bell because that Weepin' Bell is part poison type and Bulbasaur doesn't include poison in his typing until he evolves and poison is super effective on grass. Um, that said, there is no poison type block in the game, so unless you consider the purple heart to be poison, but then there's no psychic type. I guess maybe you could say that the yellow 
ones are psychic type because that's the brat the badge the uh, badge that Sabrina uses but I like to prefer I like to prefer I like to think that those are normal type blocks I'm probably just wrong now that I'm talking through this and realizing how wrong I am but um I almost made a fatal error but my genius intellect kicked in too fast and I saved myself I'm gonna line up those grass and those fire and that will set me up to win the match <clears throat> I said that Erica was pretty tough but she was not ready for my next level type pants move. Uh, she sent a lot of stuff at me, but I'm gonna use some high kicks to lose the game. It's alright. It's okay. You can learn to live another day. <clears throat> Those weren't the right words to what I was referencing, but that's alright. That's okay. So, I'm gonna go ahead and try again. I've lost track if I've lost once or twice, but the point is Erica is giving me a good smackdown. Hey, if we were WWE stars now, uh, she'd be the fastest WWE star alive. Kind of like how that dinosaur was my grandfather. If uh, I line up those water blocks, it'll hit those grass blocks, which are opposite types, so they'll repel each other into extinction. The Ice Age will come, and the Woolly Mammoths will destroy Erica from the inside out. Uh, if you weren't aware, the Ice Age was actually ended when Erica was destroyed by a Woolly Mammoth, because the uh, entire Pokemon Council decided that they were too dangerous, and they killed all of the animals and everything in the Earth, including themselves. And then, fast forward a few hundred years into modern day Japan, and we get a story told about the universe that the Pokemon universe destroyed in the Ice Age. Most people don't know this, but the finale to Pokemon, whenever it actually happens, will be the end of the world via the Ice Age, starting with Erica's death. It's a lot like Franz Ferdinand's death. It triggers world wars, except that it just triggers the Pokemon Council to end the world. As you can see, that was an advanced level 6x3 combo. <clears throat> and Erica is really feeling the pressure. I obviously could have performed better there, but we're gonna pretend I couldn't have performed better. Um, just a quick note, the music in the background is just music I made. If you don't like it, then you're gonna have to deal with it. If you like it, thanks. Um, I don't really make music. I just made this. Okay, so... Erica has dissipated all of my blocks. She's proving to be truly the most worthy opponent I've fought so far, which is a little bit surprising given the fact that she has no spikes in her hair, so she actually has no weapon to attack me with. I'm a little bit confused as to how that's possible. I might have to call in some cheating rules. Somebody red card this lady. She has got an icing call for knocking my puck over to the other side and then killing me. I'm pretty sure in a game of hockey that you might not get a red card for that, but you would probably get some kind of penalty for killing the opponent. After all, it is hockey, not Roman hockey, which is the variant where you kill your opponent. Um, now if this was Greek hockey, there wouldn't be killing, there would be uh, a lot of not killing. And if it was... Swedish hockey, there would probably be some bears jumping onto the field. Uh, according to every Swedish person I know, which is like no one, um, bears run rampant in Sweden and they kill lots of people every year. They also interrupt sports games, which is quite inconvenient for the Swedish people. On the bright side, I've got some sick combos going on. Erica doesn't stand a chance. As you can see, the longer the game goes on, the faster the blocks start to move. So things start to get harder and harder, and better and faster and stronger, and then I lose. Yeah, I lost. So, I uh, got totally shut down by Erica here, but that's okay. Maybe I'll try again in the next episode. Um, but, anyway, uh, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you guys later.